National Geographic's Dr. Bob Ballard thinks these deep channels are his best bet. Because we're making the assumption that the monster would come into the bay using these deep channels. That it would like to stay on the bottom and in as deep a water as it can to get in near the river where there must be a lot of biological activity because of the river outflow. So we wanted to pick a spot where we could set up the camera close to a deep channel. Well, to do that, we had to survey it. So we've been went around the bay and put a series of reference points and then sitting on the castle we shot in with a, with a compasses and positioned these reference points. And then we used those reference points to run back and forth across the bay with the ship, measuring the echo sounding. We figure that if we put our camera rig in about 120 feet of water, we're going to be within 500 feet of one of these deep channels. You take the rope into your boat and you worry about keeping National Geographic will position its cameras beneath the surface of the lake, suspended from sea anchors. The likelihood that the animals can be successfully photographed from the surface is being discounted. Emery Kristoff is the expedition's chief photographer. We've discounted pretty much that it would be a mammal. And we would figure if it was a mammal and be air breathing, there would be more sightings of the creature. We feel then if we are dealing with a uh, amphibian or a reptile or something of the, of the fish nature, we have a creature that uh, hunts by, by listening, picks up vibrations in the water. So we, we've tailored our program really to this. The scientists are listening too, with sensitive underwater microphones. Recordings have been made of the normal sounds of the lock at rest, at night or during the day, when boat traffic is at a minimum. They are tranquil sounds. Another recording was made late in the afternoon of July 5th. It was anything but tranquil. There was no way to tell for sure what the underwater microphones were picking up. But at about the same time the recording was made, and in about the same location, the In Search Of cameras recorded something even more remarkable. A long trail of bubbles breaking on the surface of the lock. There were no boats nearby. There were no divers. But something beneath the surface of the lock was creating a large disturbance and it provides the most convincing photographic evidence gathered this year that the monster may in fact be real, that something big and alive was moving in front of our camera just beneath the surface of Loch Ness. Monster sightings have been reported in other lakes, in Ireland, Canada, the Scandinavian countries, and elsewhere. All of these sightings occurred in roughly the same northern latitude occupied by Loch Ness. Dr. Nicholas Hutton of the Smithsonian Institution is a preeminent paleontologist on intimate terms with our world's dim past. If there is something living in Loch Ness, what could it possibly be? Uh, from my own point of view, I just don't think there is anything in Loch Ness, but there is an interesting theory put forth by Dr. Roy Mackle of the University of Chicago, who argues that uh, there may in fact be a population of giant eels. The, the point being that we know that Loch Ness supports a good population of salmon and eels, and eels, for example, live most of their lives in freshwater, but they go out to sea to reproduce, and then the young come back to the parent waters. Uh, certain individuals will fail to mature sexually, and in consequence, don't go to sea. They just live on in the fresh water, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, and Mackle thinks that this might have happened, might be what's happening in Loch Ness, in which you have a few uh, resident uh, eels which have gotten uh, grown to enormous size. He suggests 20 feet, but he also uh, admits that uh, size is extremely difficult to estimate, and uh, maybe 12 or 15 feet now might be more like it. If there is anything in Loch Ness that we don't know about uh, in 
ordinary scientific terms, it's got to be something like Mackel's eels. We now have volumes of data on the Loch Ness monsters. And none of the investigators involved disputes the probability that a creature lives in Loch Ness. And all of them agree that the intensive effort may soon turn up the monster of the lake.